My sermon passage is Luke chapter 4, verses 14 to 21. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and a report concerning him went out all through the surrounding country. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and he went to the synagogue, as his custom was, on the Sabbath day. And he stood up to read, and there was given to him the book of the prophet Isaiah. He opened the book and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Again, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Are you thinking, how dare that preacher? How dare he imitate Jesus? I'm thinking, how do I dare not? And dear Christian, I'm wondering, how do you dare not? Let us pray. We give thanks for this, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May God grant us wisdom and courage for interpretation. Jesus sat down. <clears throat> Just about like this. And it says all the eyes were fixed upon him just like y'all. And he began to say to them, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. In other words, he began to teach them. Jesus stood Jesus stood to proclaim the scripture. And then he sat to teach like a rabbi. <clears throat> In the power of the spirit, Jesus stood up to read. He proclaimed the good news. Then he sat to teach as teachers did with disciples gathered around. In the power of the Spirit, this morning, I stood up to read. I proclaimed the good news. Then I sat to make a point. But now I'm doing what preachers do, standing in a pulpit preaching. In the power of the Spirit, what do you do? In the power of the Spirit, what can you do with your abilities? The Spirit of the Lord is upon you because he has anointed you to get the good news out to the poor. He has sent you to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Church, the Spirit of the Lord is upon us because he has anointed us to get the good news out to the poor. He has sent us to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, it's not all up to Jesus. And it's not all up to preachers. It is, in fact, up to the church, the whole church. And it being the body of Christ, nothing but the church. What do you think it means to follow Jesus? Just to be one of the crowd following Jesus? 
or just to have his back? To follow Jesus means to be a disciple, a forever student. And to follow Jesus, as I say time and again, means to be Jesus-y. And that means loving God and loving others as we love ourselves, every single other. But that's just the start. I hope you didn't think it was the end-all, be-all. That's the mission statement. In today's passage, Jesus gives us some goals and objectives. What we're supposed to be doing and saying if we're trying to be like him. We are to be relieving poor people, rescuing caught people, healing and giving vision to blind people, and delivering mistreated people, subjugated people, abused, stomped on, marginalized, and even plain old everyday laughed at people. Sometimes laughter cuts deeper than a knife. And people are mocked. Comedians make livings, build careers out of that. Gosh, this is old fashioned. But the gospel is about liberty and justice for all, which is what this sick country is about when we're courageous and not scared. It is rare. The good news is liberty and justice for the living, liberty and justice for the dead, liberty and justice for all, not some. Brought to you, to me, to us, and to all the thems by Jesus, prophet, priest, sovereign, savior, Lord, teacher, from whom we are, every one of us, ambassadors. Ambassadors for Christ, little Christs, imitators of Christ Jesus. Jesus and G, us. That rush of air you just heard wasn't angels' wings or squirrels in the attic. It was the rush of soaring Christology. And so let's talk a little bit about theology and some reminders. Remember, Christology is a way of expressing how we think of Christ's divinity at any given moment. The mystery of the incarnation is that Christ is both totally divine and totally human. Since none of our brains know how to process that, we cheat a little. You might think, this is a day for attention and interruptions. <laughs> God's hand is in it all, though. Amen? You might think, well, to me, Jesus really has to be, you know, Jesus Christ superstar from deep space for this religion to make any sense at all. Anything less than Christ, the Son of God, sitting at the right hand of God Almighty, that leaves me wanting. Or you might think, well, to me, Jesus really has to be, you know, sweaty Jesus, the carpenter's son from over around Nazareth. Much more than that leaves me wondering how he could possibly know anything about me or feel my pain. But I think what most of us do is keep Jesus on kind of a slide in our mind and our hearts from high Christology to low walking with us Christology, so we let Jesus be Jesus, depending on our needs, knowing that God meets all our needs in Christ. When the tornadoes are bearing down, we might want high Christology. We want Jesus Christ, superstar, son of God from deep space. We want him to send it back down here low enough to be out there with Mike Morgan storm chasers, commanding the storms to be still, right? But you know, when the tornadoes are bearing down. We also might want low Christology. We want sweaty human, what a friend we have in Jesus, son of man from over up there around Nazareth, but with us under the blankets in that smallest interior room of the house, close enough to feel his holy but human breath holding us, praying with us and protecting us and our kitties. And sometimes it's okay to want both high and low and in between and any kind of Jesus we can get. All of that is to point out, Christian, that how you see yourself in relation to this passage in Luke, where Jesus is quoting the prophet Isaiah, talking about how God wants things to be, how you see that depends on how you see Jesus. So who is that in that synagogue? Is that Jesus Christ, superstar from deep space, with trumpets blasting? Or is it sweaty Jesus, the working man turned teacher, the working man turned activist from over around Nazareth. I say it's holy but mostly human Jesus. Notice where this has taken place. Luke says, 
And he came to Nazareth where he'd been brought up. And he went to the synagogue as his custom was on the Sabbath day. He was at home where they knew him as the carpenter's son, not God's son. He had to teach them that or die trying. So it's not super Jesus saying this. Practically speaking and even Christologically speaking, it's more or less mostly Jesus, our friend and companion, talking. So if that's the case, we can step up as he did and do these things, right? We can relieve poor people, rescue caught people, heal and give vision to blind people, and deliver mistreated people. And we do. We relieve poor people, we rescue caught people, and we deliver mistreated people when we give money, food, and time, whether through our offerings, through this church, or through the mission, or through the food bank, we do that. And we bring healing with our programs, cooperating with Redeemer Lutheran and New Covenant Baptist and the Oklahoma Healthy Aging Initiative and the OU College of Nursing and the study that we just reapplied to participate in, we do bring healing. And I think we give vision to a kind of blind people when we invite folks to another series of discussions on racism, reconciliation, and privilege. I think we do. And in all that, we embody the word, I believe. We embody the word. So we've got it covered, right? We can stand with Jesus, then sit with him, leaving onlookers stunned. Well, no. The word of God is not only embodied and lived out, although it has to be that. The word of God has always been spoken, exhaled, declared, whispered, proclaimed, shouted, prophesied, testified, enunciated, slurred, said with a dialect, or not translated, Taught and prod. That's my word. The word of God is said with words. As it was in the beginning, is now and always shall be world without end. In the beginning, God did and God said. There is no doing without saying and God's way of saying and doing things. So Jesus stood and said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach and proclaim good news to the poor, release to the captives, new sight to the blind, liberty for the oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus was not messing around. He was not speaking in the abstract. Jesus meant, and the way of Jesus means, extra, extra good news, breaking news for you poor. Now, not just in the sweet by and by good news now because followers of Jesus help the poor even as they preach good news to the poor. But he didn't say the poor you know or the deserving poor, whatever that means. He didn't say the citizen poor or the righteous poor, but the poor, period. So good news for the poor has to mean more than filling stomachs right now today and a man or woman in a church here and there preaching it. It has to mean all of us assailing, railing, and complaining, calling, writing, emailing, tweeting, calling for righteousness, and voting righteously, and calling out immoral laws and immoral lawmakers that keep people poor. On and on until we get the attention that Jesus got. It says all eyes were fixed on him, not just because of what he said, but because of who he was and where he was. May we say, may what we say and do bring Christ where we are, wherever we are. It's the same for the captives. Good news, release. In Imperial Rome, Jesus was probably talking about prisoners of war, and they just took people. We have prisoners of unjust war in this country. We have prisoners of unjust war in this country. The failed war on drugs that comes to mind. By the way, can you believe that Oklahoma is actually letting some people out of prison for marijuana possession because of the change in marijuana laws? I think it's a miracle. I really can't believe it. Thank, thanks be to God. Coming clean on that's a good start. But we should lend our Jesus a voice to condemning other wars, wars on black men and all women in this state 
wars that have filled ungodly and constitutional privately run prisons all out of proportion to demographics. Blindness in our friends and neighbors and kin. Now this is this is where the this is where it gets tough. We've all got to preach it and proclaim it or just uh, talk to those people. <laughs> we can be brave and say something like, I know, I know, you're hurting. It's scary. Maybe I can help. Jesus heals. Listen to him. Listen to Jesus and the scriptures and old creeds and trusted old saints of God, the old faithful church. Not these present day Huckabees. I'm sorry, I mean hucksters. We've all got to preach and proclaim liberty for the oppressed. Oppressed by drugs, by laws, and by drug laws. Oppressed by politics and fear and hate and evil in all its forms, especially when it comes with alligator smiles and campaign signs. If we're not resisting evil, we are not doing Christianity right. And we're not doing right by Jesus, who we say we love. We have to pray and work to help people who hurt, and we have to pray and work to help people who are hurting them. And we have to pray and work to heal people who are weeping, as well as those who are making them weep because they're all caught up in something bad. Here's one more example from Jesus, our teacher, from the passage. He said, in the context of bringing liberty to the oppressed, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That is a reference to an ideal, uh, the 50-year jubilee, when land in Israel that had been mortgaged went back to its owner, and the debts were forgiven, and the Israelite slaves were released, and the mercies of God, the mercies of God through the people were especially manifest. Do you hear what Jesus is talking about there? It's how to keep society and economics just, with a big reset. What does that mean to us? Well, where is the greatest oppression? I can think of some things that need a big do-over. Prisons, warehousing so many people mainly because they're poor. Uh, the affordability of housing. We're just nipping at the margins on that. Uh, mistreatment of the aged. Uh, mistreatment of the youngest. The crushing weight of student debt. Most of us have the privilege of having pet issues. But wherever there is a power difference and exploitation, wherever there are captives to be set free, Jesus is, and we should be. These are issues of economic justice. Jesus talked about them and against them all the time. By the way, editorial remark, keep your eye on that young congresswoman from the Bronx, AOC. She showed Sarah Huckabee Sanders that she knows her Bible this week. Maybe you missed it. She could be a prophet. I'll fill you in later if you don't know what I'm talking about. Finally, notice what got Jesus into this situation in his hometown synagogue. It's what will get and keep us in the thick of God's will and God's work. It says, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. At his baptism, Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove. Then at the wedding at Cana, Jesus' glory abounded in the abundance of wine made from water, and the Spirit drew the disciples into deeper faith. Then the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tested, and he passed with flying colors. And then it says, Jesus returned home in the power of the Spirit and declared before all of his old friends and kin, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And it compelled him to do and say the things of God, his Father. Sisters and brothers, the Spirit of the Lord is upon us for us to do and say the things God has for us. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us at our baptism and through our trials and temptations, and especially when we dare stand up amid the people who know us best, warts and all, and dare to proclaim God's good news for all. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. 
this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Amen.